Today we're going to talk about racecraft. Hi everyone, thanks for joining for another episode of the Race Driver Coach Show and yes, today is about overtaking, defending and the things we learned from the Portuguese Grand Prix. Now, just a word before we go into this. When you're preparing for a race weekend, make sure that racecraft is quite a big part of your preparation. Sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. They're just thinking lap time. But you've got to spend just as much time on, okay, once we've got qualifying, free practice qualifying all out the way, what about the rest? Yes, I've got to do a good start, but the actual race craft for that particular circuit, really important. The corner configurations, which corners are good for overtaking? How can I set cars up so I can make a move? And how do I defend if I'm being attacked myself? You've got to know all of this. You can practice on the simulator. You can do it in theory, just on a track map saying, right, this is definitely the corner. Turn 10 is definitely the corner that we've got, we can overtake, but we've got to start it in turn nine or even turn eight. We've got to make sure they over defend into them corners and then they're sitting ducks when we get into the turn 10. You've really got to uh, spend a lot of time and master this. It's important. If you get a reputation for being a good racer, for being aggressive, assertive, the kind of driver always goes forward. If you get that rep in the industry, it makes you desirable to so manufacturers and people and sponsors and teams that want to pay for your racing. It, you stand out because it's that's the that's what they want they want a fighter and when you're fighting on track okay you're not using boxing gloves you're using your car and you're not harming them but you're still fighting you're still pulling moves you're still being tactical positioning the other person your opponent where you want them so you can attack no different and you should actually approach it that way as well there's an art to fighting as a race driver not in the park Fermi, but when you're on the on the on the track trying to make a position and defending as well it's all the same so yeah in the industry really important but also on the on the grid if the other drivers that you're competing against know that you're really good in the race that you're always pulling moves when you're in their mirror you're going to be stealing their focus when they're on their own, 100% focus really is on the driving now and you know next corner and they're getting into the rhythm. But when a driver comes behind who's known for making moves like a Hamilton or a Verstappen, when they come in your mirrors, they steal your attention and then you start to look in your mirror and they're dominating you mentally. I want you to do that. You to have that reputation. This takes time to build, obviously. It takes a few seasons before people really start to see how good you are. Maybe one season, but it's important. You have like a rule that I'm going to get past no matter what. And that just forces you to unlock the equation or the puzzle of how am I going to get past this car? How am I going to get past this car? And you're always looking ahead of it, thinking, how can it be done? And the more you do this, the better you get at it, the better the rep is, the more you dominate other people's minds that you're fighting against. And you make them scared, really nervous when you're in the mirror, not because you're going to fire them off, but because they know a move is coming. They're like, oh, here we go. They'll over defend, they'll lose touch with the car in front of them. Again, they're sitting ducks. I want you to major in racecraft, make it yours. Like I say, practice on the sim before you go uh, to a race weekend. Try different things with your teammates or people that you trust, uh, see what works. And yeah, the corner configurations are really important. And that's gonna be my first tip. Now, Portuguese Grand Prix, we saw good overtaking. Uh, four lessons really I want to take from from that race the first one is to do with configurations I'm just going to do a really shabby drawing here of the corners but when I talk about configurations it's like this say you've got a long right hander followed by a left now that's overtaking dream and we saw it with Lando Norris and Ocon when Ocon was went to the inside you know fairly normal race line but Lando was like okay if you're going there it's the first lap why not I'm going to go around the outside because what that's going to do is going to give me the inside for the left. Really important to know. So before you go to any racetrack, it's important to see these kind of corners. When I said about configurations, that's what it lends itself to. And when it is pretty scrappy at the beginning of the race, you know, you've got cars being held up. You can just fill gaps 
And that's what Lando did. He filled the gap. He went around the outside. There's a gap there. I'm going to fill it. Because if I can make this work and just hang it around the outside, I will be on the inside for the left. And away I go. Perfect. That was a great execution from him. Um, and, you know, if uh, if he didn't defend Ocon, well, well if Ocon wasn't quite tight enough and he was thinking about the car in front of him, Lando would have filled that gap then and just tried to push his way through. So it's all about first lap. So there's two lessons. When there's configuration like that, use it to your advantage. Go around the outside so it gives you the inside for the next, which is the obvious one. But also on the first lap, just take opportunities. As soon as you see a gap, you go, you fill it. Don't think about it because by the time you thought about it and, and hesitated, someone will have filled it for you or it, the moment will be gone. Again, takes practice, takes confidence. Will go wrong a few times, but that's just what you got to do. If you want to be a good racer, you're going to have to push the envelope a little bit more. It's going to go wrong once in every six times. That's why you see these fast drivers that are good up for overtaking. They're known for overtaking and you just know they're good at it. They do have some big whoopsies sometimes, but on average, they go forward and they make it work. And the more you do it, the better you get and the more confident you get. Really important. Okay, second one, second lesson, even though that was pretty much two in one then. Second lesson from the Grand Prix was opening up the corner when you're being overtaken or when you're overtaken. Turn one, you saw Bottas being attacked by Hamilton. Now, Bottas made a mistake here. He it was pretty much done anyway. Fair enough, the overtaking was going to be done no matter what. But he didn't make Hamilton's life hard. Instead, he pretty much gave it him. <clears throat> so what, <clears throat> what he did is he defended on the approach to one. Bottas did. He uh, uh, stayed right-hand side on the way up to a right-hand corner. So he's on a tight line. So, uh, so Hamilton then goes to the outside. And on the turning point, Bottas is still tight. When really he should have followed Hamilton over to the left-hand side. So they've both got a good line through there. But he didn't. He made it too easy for him. Left a big space. Hamilton had the perfect race line all to himself. And Bottas was just too tight for the corner. So he lost loads. So even if you're going to be overtaken, you, you know, you're in Bottas's position. You say, okay, I know it's over. I know he's going to get me. Um, he's probably got DRS and all this. At least make his life difficult. And at least make sure that you don't lose too much time yourself so then P3 is not all over you or whoever it is behind there. So you still got, even though you're getting overtaken, try not to lose too much time. Open up the corner and you saw, even though Hamilton was doing it to Verstappen, uh, yeah, you saw him actually force Verstappen over or follow him, even more important, it wasn't forcing. So Verstappen went back to the left on the turning point, Hamilton just followed he didn't go in tight and ruin his own speed. Really important. Okay, so make sure that if you are defending, you come back as much as that car that's on the outside will allow you. And you never know. They might then freak out and back out. Or they might use uh, track limits on the exit and get done for that because they're basically firing it around the outside of you just that little bit more. And they could lose it. Not lose it, but just go wide. So there's lots of benefits. Don't give them free space. If they're overtaking you, give them a hard time. Okay, next lesson. Um, oh, there's one more photo, actually. You saw, talking of squeezing, you saw uh, Verstappen straight after that move. Still try a little cheeky one around the outside of the next corner. And Hamilton just showed him the elbow and said, no, don't even think about it. It's another good point. <laughs> if, you've, if you've got someone who's thinking about just coming around the outside of you, just, just gently come out. Don't drive into them, obviously, but just show them. If you want this, you're going to have to either go through the gravel or you're going to have to back out. It's your choice. So you can do this. Again, very risky, and it could end up in an accident now and then. But it's this kind of elbows out that also shows the driver behind that if you're going to do it, you better make sure you're going to do it. I don't want this half-ass thinking about you hovering around the, quarter, the back quarter where I can't really see you in the mirror. No, no, you've got to make, make it like... It, they're going to have to fight for it. Okay, another lesson there. Right, a really easy, quick one. Third thing I want to say is if you're in a train, right, so you've got a car in front of you, you're attacking a car down a straight, make sure you're using the slipstream of the car in front. It's obvious again, right, but there's a car that's about 20 meters ahead of both of you, or 10 meters ahead of you, both of you. You should be fighting over getting the toe from that car, the slipstream, just that little bit more speed. 
it's something that you see again drivers not doing enough or they realize too late or they get someone do it to them and they just train him past so you come up to a car you overtake but then if he's got or she's got the toe of the car in front you'll get alongside and then they'll start to pull away again Make, try and force them so you can get the, uh, the the toe off the car in front or at least look for it and if they move across out of the toe you quickly go for the toe all right so always think okay thinking ahead i'm not just being hypnotized by this car that's right next to me i'm thinking a little bit more clever than you and i'm going to get the toe just that free help from the car in front simple simple tip right another thing people miss right and the last one was again uh bottas versus verstappen now verstappen was just going into drs zone so he was going to get bottas anyway bottas knew this but this time he did make his opponent's life difficult. And it's a left hander. A left hander, it's like turn three, I think, depending on how you number the corners. But what he did is Verstappen was just about to do the switch back, the switch a Rooney on Bottas. And that means you're coming from the outside, they're in tight. And, and once you once that car that's tight comes off the apex, you're gonna go underneath them and get a nice slingshot on the exit. Right? That was the that was the plan. Bottas knew full well that's what Verstappen was trying to do. So Verstappen did set it up. But what Bottas did, which was clever, was he stopped the car on the apex just that little bit. He just delayed his throttle. So then this switch that should have been just a nice fluid move for um, Verstappen, it wasn't. He had to back out because he nearly hit him. So if you've got somebody who's going to do that, it usually happens at hairpins where you go down the inside and then the car that's on the outside will wait for you to wash out wide and then they'll c come back at you and get you on the exit. If you're the one that's down the inside, just stop it on the apex a little bit. You see it a lot, but you also see drivers not do it enough. So just stop so that it stops that car. You shut the door, you can't get in. Really important to remember, okay? So as you're coming down the inside of a car, within the brake threshold, you know, you're not going to outbreak yourself. You just lift off the brake a little bit to get there and then when you're there you stop it a little bit and then they can't get in really cool he obviously verstappen obviously got him anyway in the end because he had drs and he could get him it was easy but with a car without drs it's a really good way to defend stopping on the apex and it hurts their run and they can't get around you so that's the four tips so really check out the configurations which ones can i go around the outside to get on the inside for the next one if I need to prepare earlier, so say, like I said, to turn eight, I've got to make them defend into turn eight so I can get them into nine or ten. Think about these things. It's all about positioning the car, the other car, the opponent, where you want them so you can execute the move. Um, when you're being overtaken, make people's life hell. <laughs> so if they're overtaking you into, a, like, turn one, the right-hander, don't just stay tight, come back. So they have to really work for it. Even if they're in front, just show that you're going to not lose time through there if they overtake you and they can then make a mistake if you really just put them on the edge. Uh, the third one was obviously use slipstream as much as you can. It's free speed down the straight. So if you're overtaking, make sure you're the one that claims it or tries to claim it. Be careful when you're getting too close. You don't want to interlock wheels on a single seater. Um, you can nudge yourself across a little bit better if you're in a tin top. And then stopping on the apex was the other one. If somebody is going to do a switch back on you, then you stop them on the apex and then you've got the exit normally, unless they've got DRS after. Right, so that's the four tips. Uh, there's plenty more, obviously, when it comes, but it's just really using the, the race from the F1 race from yesterday just to hit home the importance of racecraft. I want you to, to really treat this seriously before every single race weekend, even if it's a simulator race, you're online racing. How can I overtake? I've got to practice that. It's not just about lap time. Because you can be slightly off the pace, but in a race, if you are good at overtaking, you can make that up and you can get them positions back. Even, even though you're two or three tenths slower than everybody else, if you fight well, you can hold your own and get positions that are better than your pace. Okay, that's it for now. See you next time.